Hello everyone, uh, my name is Professor Ahmed Banafa and I am a faculty member at San Jose State College of Engineering and also at uh, Stanford University, the Continuing Education Department. Um, uh, thank you for this opportunity and I'm looking forward to answer all the questions you have uh, on the list. I'm going to start with the first one, which is explain what is IoT in simple words. The IoT stands for the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things is a, is, is a huge ecosystem that uh, encompasses the people, object, and, uh, and devices together. They're connected. Uh, uh, every device sends, act, to react. A simple example of this, if you have a smart uh, mirror at home and uh, you... Uh, you come in the morning and you look at that mirror and the mirror will tell you that you look uh, sick. I already contacted your doctor and Uber is on the way to pick you up to the doctor. I moved all your business meeting to next week. And you went to the doctor, Uber took you back home. The uh, doctor contacted the pharmacy. The pharmacy uh, sent the, uh, the medication using a drone. The drone confirmed your identity by scanning your eyes. Give you that container, you open that container, you take one pill, that uh, the signal sent to the doctor that you took one pill, you swallow that pill and it dissolves in your body. Another signal is sent to the doctor saying that you took, that you took one pill. That is just one example of what is IoT and what are really the implications or the application of IoT. Other example is having something called smart forks, the fork that we use for uh, for eating that that will be a smart one where the fork itself will tell you talk back to you saying this food is not good for you because you are you are sick of this and this or you should be careful about uh, eating certain uh, ingredients or you're not eating the proper way the fork will ask you to 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 move uh, your hand right or left or up and down a third example is having an IP address for every uh, part of your body your heart your lung your uh, your liver, uh, your pancreas, all of them will have an IP address. The doctor will hack into your uh, uh, body and uh, or or that part of your body and can check it instead of you going there. So that's just 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 a, a simple ex uh, simple examples of what is IoT and how the IoT is really going to change our life. We know that IoT devices uh, are not really secure nowadays against hacking. Can you please tell us? the most common uh, IoT you know, problems or uh, uh, points of uh, problems there. Before I talk about this, let me explain to you the different components of IoT. IoT consists of, as a system, as an ecosystem, consists of four parts. The first one is the senses. The second one is the uh, communication, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet. And the third one is the cloud, where you process the data, and the last one is the applications or the application that facing or giving to the consumer if you have if you have an application or an app on your uh, phone that will turn off and on the lights uh, close and open the doors all of these things is part of this application so if you look at the four elements here each one of them is actually a prime target for hacking and uh, securing each one of them is a big daunting uh, mission and, and job for for people to protect every single point on the Internet of Things. It's, it's really it's really not an easy thing to do. How do you imagine the future of IoT with its software development or hardware revolution? Example, super microcontrollers. Well, it's going to go all directions. The development will go again through the four elements we talk about them. There will be an advancement in the sensors. We're not talking about just simple binary systems. We're talking about uh, a smart sensor that can sense and send you the information when it is really um, you know, worth it. It's not just sending information saying we're okay, there's nothing wrong. If something changed, they will send you that information. The same thing with the protocols. Having 5G, having the, eth you know, the Ethernet connectivity, having a faster protocols, whether it is for a short range or a long range communication, that will be another thing that we should look at it when it comes to advancement. And whatever uh, programs that we are using to process the data at the level of the cloud to get the insights. The artificial intelligence will be involved with this, this part of the Internet of Things because it's going to give us insight, information collected, that, that will help. The last one is the apps. We are looking for something called a killer app. The killer app, which is or apps that will introduce the Internet of Things for every single aspect of our life. We don't have that one yet. A killer app is like the email app. It's like the, the map app, which is in every uh, smartphone. We need something like this one for the Internet of Things. 
that will make it so necessary for everybody to have this one on their smartphone the uh, the next question is what is blockchain technology what is smart contract how does it work the blockchain technology is a very uh, you know uh, it's a it's a hot technology it's actually part of something called the IBAC uh, the IBAC stands for in Internet of Things blockchain artificial intelligence and cybersecurity many of my students ask me you know about the hot technologies the hot trends in technology and I point at the IBAC which is Internet of Things for the I, B for the blockchain, A for the artificial intelligence, and C for the cybersecurity. Those are really the hot trends in the valley. And one, uh, when we talk about the blockchain, we're talking about a buzzword, a buzzword that is really of excitement for so many of the investors, for so many of the startups. Uh, you add the blockchain to your presentation, people will pay attention to you. So what is it? Blockchain is a software. That's what it is. The software that's written in multiple languages, program languages, the, uh, the Bitcoin, the famous cryptocurrencies are actually written in C++. There are specific program languages that used by Ethereum or used by the other, uh, you know, big organization that deals with the cryptocurrency that used, that build the underlying technology for the cryptocurrency. And we should not confuse the two. Cryptocurrency is just a product of the blockchain. It's just the fam most famous product of that. If I want to explain the blockchain for anyone as a technology, I will give this example. If you go to a building and there is a security guard at the building and you just present your, uh, you just present your uh, ID and that person, that security guard will let you in. And after this one, you're free. You do whatever you want. This is the current system, the centralized trust system we have now. This is the security we have centralize. You have username, password, you get in, there's firewalls and that's it. In the case of the blockchain, if you have 100 people in that building, 100 staff, each one of them, if they're applying the blockchain technology as a mindset of thinking, then they will have a, a list of everybody who should be in the building with their picture. And if somebody new came to the building, even if this person is not supposed to be there and he or she convinced the security guard to let them in, then the first few people will see that person and say, I don't see him. I don't see him on the list. His picture is not here. And they're going to start asking the other you know, staff. And this is the other node on the blockchain network. And they that means they're syncing with them. Do you have him on your list? And if, if you have 51% of the number of the people in the building, like 51, saying that this person is not on the list, that person had, that person will be thrown away out of the, the, the uh, building. And this is, you apply this one to the case of the nodes of the computers. The uh, software of the blockchain will be on 100 computers. And you will, uh, you will enter transaction of sending money from A to B. And there will be copies of it. The same transaction will be encrypted using something called SHA-256. And that will be copies in, in every single node of that network. Now, if somebody's tried to change that number from 50,000 to 100,000, because of the syncing mechanism that's going on up between you know, all the nodes, the 100,000 will be not the same as the 50,000 and the rest of the nodes. So what's going to happen is that node will be isolated, will be forked out, will be out. And this is how you keep it safe, by having multiple copies of the same information on multiple nodes. And you can have it whether it is 500 nodes or you can have it as 10,000 nodes. It depends on what kind of blockchain technology you're looking for. Smart contract is an additional layer on the blockchain which is will execute the transaction. I'm talking about sending money from A to B. If certain condition, uh, you know, uh, if certain condition uh, uh, not executed, if, you know, exists. So if uh, in order for me to send you the money, then uh, I have to check that the GPS on your on your phone is at at the certain coordinates and confirm that it's you by sampling your voice. So I have conditions, and again, it's a software, some smart contract or software that you write down the conditions. If we fulfill those conditions, then the money, the blockchain transaction, will be executed. So this is this is how the the smart contract and the blockchain actually related. As you know, it is almost impossible for the hacker to hack blockchain technology. We all know that hacking is developing fast, really fast. So that that's a very interesting statement. Do you think that the blockchain uh, technology would be hackable in the future? Is is it uh, the near or future or the far future? Let's go back to the example of the hundred people. In that in that building, 
if that person who came in convinced 51 percent which means 51 you know you know staffs that they add his name to the to that list now that person hacked into the system now the whole idea and this is very important you know to keep in mind the whole idea of the blockchain is not to say that it is it is uh, uh, it is not hackable or unhackable it's not if you can all go over the 15 then there's actually a name the 51 percent attack then you, you you can change the information but the whole concept of the blockchain is to make sure that the the process is so complicated and so difficult that the bad actors will give up similar to the example of you want to go and rob the bank but the bank has the police cars around it have snipers at the top of the building I mean you can go and try but you're gonna lose your life so it's not even worth it and this is this is the very important concept of blockchain make it so hard and difficult if you have 10,000 computers have 10,000 copies by the time you're trying to get to that 5,100 now everybody knows that you're trying to change the system and uh, how much money you're gonna spend and how much time you're gonna spend just to get one transaction chain so this is this is the this is why they look at it as a very difficult system to hack uh, the exception for this is if we get into the quantum computers, then this process will be faster, and we're not at that stage yet. So as as long as we don't have that quantum computers that you could go and buy it from the stores, and it's a laptop that's quantum laptop, we're okay. Once we start putting these things on the internet, now we have the attack service. It's actually becoming you know bigger and bigger. Uh, because you've got all of these, those people, or uh, all these people are, uh, you know, uh, out there that would, uh, who could, uh, in theory, have control and have access. Uh, in 2020, we will have about 50 billion devices connected. So, uh, that's the prediction for this. The question is, what is really needed to secure the Internet of Things? Where do we start securing things? Look at the four components of the Internet of Things. Look at how we're going to secure the sensors. Look at the sensor, how you, how you secure them that there will be no false alarms. Nobody will take over. There is no something like called denial of service, or sometimes we call them denial of sleep, which means you drain the battery and then you replace that uh, sensor with, with whatever information. Look at the second part of it, which is the networking. The protocols you are using, how many of them are really secure protocols? And then look at the cloud, what kind of services we are using in the cloud, and how protected is that cloud computing so we can do uh, we can do all the calculation and the applications how can we secure this kind of applications this is this is where we should be thinking about when you're thinking about securing the Internet of Things the emergent threats in Internet of Things and the risk vectors of vectors of the Internet of Things uh, the bigger the the, the uh, number of the devices the higher the risk we, we have and, and uh, one of the basic things that we see when it comes to uh, the Internet of Things devices, I look at them as access points to your, uh, you know, to your uh, Wi-Fi, to your network. And one of the biggest problem or the common problem that we, has, we have seen with people adding uh, devices to their, to, to their network is they never change the password. They keep the factory uh, password, which is the factory default password, which is something you can find on the internet and uh, there was a famous attack in uh, I remember that one it was on October 23rd October 26th of 2016 where uh, um, this group of hackers they wrote a, a simple program in C and it's it's available in GitHub it's about uh, uh, 600 lines and they used that one to take over uh, you know about 500,000 devices like baby uh, you know uh, uh, like the baby uh, detector there for the uh, uh, you know for uh, in a, f the other one is uh, uh, they took uh, control of the uh, monitor the, the baby monitors uh, devices and the nest uh, uh, the nest uh, thermostat and uh, the smoke detectors and cameras all of these things they, they they took all these devices because they've been set up to the default password and they use them as a staging attack for famous website like New York Times Twitter you name it and they brought those uh, those uh, website down and this is this is one of the uh, this is one of the you know emerging threats for that and that and and at the heart of this is what we have now as the hubs for the Internet of Things and let me explain what what does that mean uh, Alexa 
Siri, uh, Google Home, and uh, Cortana, uh, you know, uh, you name it, you know, all those, uh, you know, uh, all, those, uh, all those kind of devices or applications that use to uh, uh, use the voice to so you can you can you can take certain actions with your phone or other devices Amazon and uh, Google and Apple and Max they understand that this is the future this is this is the hub that all the devices in the future will be communicating with and they understand that the next wave of the human machine interaction is not the graphical user interface which is you click or you touch that one it is the voice user interface 80% of our communication is done through through verbal communication or voice. 80%. The other 20% is the other four senses. Now, the thing about it is if you look at the sci-fi movies, if you look at R2-D2, you look at you know the, the, the other movies we have, that you see that they are talking to those machines in the future. They don't, you know, barely they touch them to change something. Everything is done through the voice. And this is the next wave here. Those devices as the hubs for the Internet of Things are really the future where you will uh, you know, will buy a new car and they are going to ask you, you want to go with Siri or you're going to go with Alexa. And then everything, all the devices you have can be connected through the Bluetooth. And this is, this is, this is why we have to think about what will be the next level of security when it comes to connecting all the devices to the, uh, to the hubs of, the, of IoT. Uh, what the risk and types of data that are, are found in smart devices the smart devices the word smart when you add it to any smart car smart house smart factory you have to understand it actually uh, indicates two things three things not two three number one is that there is a there is a connectivity to the internet that's mean there's an ip address and there is an operating system that's running that device and there is an algorithm that is an ai that's why we call it smart so if you look at this one, you're going to see the first one is the problem because once you have an IP address, that means this IP address will give you access to the network. And that access to the network, once you are in a house, you can get access to all these smartphones. You can have access to all the computers. If it's in the, you know, at a company, you have access to more you know, uh, vital informations like the customer list, the, uh, you know, the intellectual properties, all of them will be, and anybody who have access to this one, they can just, you know, just grab this information and copy this one and transfer that information. Not talking about the banks, if somebody can go and clean the bank accounts for, for the clients. Uh, what exactly this data and how it can be effect, affect us as the end user, this is the same thing. Now, if I have access to your smartphone and you have the your bank account, you have Venmo account, you have whatever account you have, bank account you have there, then that will give me access to that. I can transfer, I can, I can get all this information, I can clean your, uh, your account very easily and, 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 and get all your personal information. What are the risks when attackers take control of vulnerable exposed devices? They, they use those devices as access to the big network. That's the whole thing. There is, a, there is actually a famous story about uh, a hotel in, in Las Vegas. The hackers managed to get into the network of the, of the hotel. And it is really a very expensive, win-known bank, uh, win-known uh, hotel. And uh, they, uh, they, get, they gain access through uh, a fish tank. I mean, if you go to the lobby of uh, some of the uh, hotels in uh, Las Vegas, you're going to see that uh, a big part of it is actually a fish tank. And the key thing here is that that fish tank needs uh, somebody or the devices to keep uh, the temperature and the level of the food and the the uh, cleanness of the water. And and that that device connected to the internet is part of the Wi-Fi. And they protected every single device, every single access point except that one. So the hacker gain access to that fish tank and they manage to grab all the information get access to all the information of the high laurels uh, you know the gamblers uh, you know uh, all their information their passport their bank account uh, where and how and when all the information for months until somebody discover that so a lot of data being collected that we have never had before what kind of storage is needed uh, and where, how can, uh, secu how can we secure this data? Uh, the storage is really one of the one of the uh, uh, elements that it is not is not a big problem because we are advancing in the storage with the SSD, 
where you can uh, you, you can actually cram a lot of information and the prices is going down and uh, how to secure it is the challenge here how can I have it part of a network and that network will be secure how can I encrypt this data so nobody can use this data uh, how can I protect the access point oh, they are the really the weakest link for the uh, for any system the access point how can I uh, can I protect that and and the weakest link for any system is actually the user it's also it's the strongest link because the weakest link is the, if the user is uneducated about the seriousness of of keeping the password uh, safe or having a password that it is really strong enough or not just adding a letter or a number to the previous password then that's going to be a problem because you can guess that password and people can gain access to that the next question is what inspired you to write your book secure and smart internet of things um, I started working on internet of things uh, six years ago it's actually evolved from working with a cloud computing and then I found out the internet of things as bigger view it's just the uh, cloud computing is just one part of it and uh, and and in 2017 I remember I wrote an article about a paper about uh, you know a secure model for uh, uh, IOT using blockchain and MIT uh, technology review uh, picked up that article and published it and that was my starting point and down the, the road I wrote over a hundred plus articles and did a lot of uh, research about the the Internet of Things and, and the security of the Internet thing and the relationship between Internet of Things and blockchain and AI um, so I decided to bring everything together in one book and uh, and this is this is why I have the title of the book at uh, secure and smart IOT using blockchain and artificial intelligence and um, and it is now available you know uh, you know at uh, big universities is actually uh, Stanford told me they have it and uh, UC Berkeley and uh, last week I received information from uh, Harvard Princeton and Yale that they have the book uh, and Purdue also have that book, so uh, it's it's uh, it's used oh you know in about fifty five uh, top universities in the world as as one of the references. And uh, the next question uh, talking about the book was the number one trend on Amazon industrial page. Why do you think uh, did grab that all that interest in the book? If you if you look at the book, and the book is actually in multiple format. There is a hard copy, and there is actually the Kindle version. Uh, if you look at that book, you're going to see that I did not only cover the IoT by itself. I covered something else called the industrial uh, IoT. And the industrial IoT is another side of the coin when you look at the big picture of Internet of Things. IoT is for the consumers. Industrial Internet of Things is for the macro view, like smart factors, smart cities, smart streets. So you're looking at the big picture. It's very common in Europe compared to the United States. In the United States, we focus more on the consumer's level. That's why Internet of Things is a big thing here. So I cover that part and 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 the industrial technology is really dealing with all these kind of challenges and implementations of the industrial industrial uh, you know uh, Internet of Things uh, you have uh, written and taught a course in Stanford University under the name of blockchain technologies that started in January I'm still you know I've been uh, I'm still teaching that you know this is um, I'm entering my second year with uh, with Stanford University teaching the class how was the people interaction and and, and how uh, uh, were they gaining from the course uh, back to the view of the IBAC the Internet of Things blockchain artificial intelligence and cybersecurity blockchain is a buzzword in the valley it's really grabbing the attention of almost everybody all of the VCs they look at it as you know a hot technology that it is uh, it is it's gonna extend you know for a few years before uh, before it become a main, mainstream and um, we don't have you know a simple way of explaining this one to you know uh, you know to everybody so what I have done I prepare a course uh, you know um, you know uh, with the working with Stanford and how can we present this to as a starting point so people can understand what is this technology and let me remind you that blockchain is a software so it's that let's keep this in mind when we talk about it it's actually if you look at the software at the block it's few lines and how we present it so uh, so uh, the uh, Stanford invited me to uh, you know to teach that class uh, and uh, the first uh, day I opened the class and I remember that uh, the, 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 the cab of the class was uh, 30 
and I find myself, you know, dealing with double of the number of the of the student. Uh, you know, uh, the university university uh, informed me that we have, you know, I have to uh, increase it or we have to open other sections to to get to teach that. This is how much interest really in a, in a huge and an elite university like Stanford University, and that's why I keep teaching the class. And uh, the next time I'm going to teach it will be in. Uh, the beginning of this quarter, the fall quarter at Stanford, which is uh, September 23rd uh, of this year, uh, and also at the, the same time, the uh, uh, the I'm working uh, with Stanford University to teach a class about cybersecurity, and and that's hopefully that's going to be the next, uh, you know, in the next uh, term, next quarter. What are your plans for your next book? What would it be about my next book will be about uh, blockchain uh, and I'm almost done with the book uh, it's gonna be out in November of, uh, of this year uh, the book will title is blockchain technology and application it is exactly what I'm teaching at Stanford University exactly what I'm teaching at San Jose State I just put it all together and added the new development in uh, in blockchain like the Libra the Facebook's Libra that's that's one thing I added to the uh, to the book and uh, and that will be my next step. Now, uh, in 2020, the plan is to have three more books. One of them is talking about artificial intelligence. One talking about cybersecurity, and the third one is talking about the interaction of uh, the four technologies in the IBEC together and their applications. Many people think that AI is threatening the humanity. People like Elon Musk. What do you think about this one? I, you know, I, honestly, I disagree with the concept that Elon Musk is talking about. You know, with all due respect to him, he's, he's a well-known name in the valley and in the world. But uh, we should not look at AI as a threat. We should look at AI as actually a partner. Uh, Gartner, the the big IT consulting firm, uh, they come they come out with or they come up with the uh, study saying that we're going to lose 1.8 million in the United States jobs uh, because of the AI advancement in 2020, but we're going to gain 2.1 million new jobs because of the AI. So the net here is positive. This is the same concept, the same story we have when whenever we have a new technology. People lose their jobs. Some people lose their jobs, and we the, we have new doors opened for for new technologies new skills so so the 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 uh, difference is 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 positive so this is one side about it uh, threatening the the, you know, the the human race is 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 a really uh, a stretch statement uh, when we look at uh, the ai and how this ai can evolve it's written by human and it's actually have the bias of human and have the risk and the think of human so if we if we think that the if, if what we are developing as an AI is is really going to threat the human, it's not because of the programs. It's because of the intention of the people who are creating that program. It's not going to take over the world. I mean, it's not going to get to the point where where uh, the human will be slaves for the uh, for the for the AI. There always will be a way for us to go back and unplug killer switch you know the kill switch we have you know in the system where you can shut it down if something is is, is going out of control singularity the next question about technical singularity which is the point where the machine will be you know will be uh, thinking by themselves and processed and think by by the by themselves the, the 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 whole story i look at it here is the machines will be doing the task that we're not supposed to do it's actually repetitive we'll be focusing on more using our brain we're not going to stay at the same level as as what we have here when we get to the singularity it's going to be a higher level because now you have you have you have your brain used to think about more tasks more you know uh, more new things expand it compared to the repetitive or the one minute task that the the ai will be doing what is beyond ai what if the what if the future of ai okay what is the future of ai so uh, quantum computing is something that i always talk about it 5 years from now Ten years from now, quantum computing is a big thing that's going to change so many things. It's still at the early stages. Few companies are dealing with it. Government, you know, agencies are going through that. Uh, I know about Google. They're working with NASA on, on their quantum computing uh, computer. Uh, there are companies in Canada also working on in, in, uh, quantum computing. But it is not at the level where users like us can use it. That's That is the turning point where... I can go and buy that the laptop or that quantum uh, com uh, computer, and that's that's going to change a lot of things. Everything will change after that. You're talking about quantum 
artificial intelligence you're talking about quantum blockchain you're talking about add quantum to all the you know to all the terms here a lot of companies um, and investors invest in blockchain and uh, internet of things sectors where do you think the markets going uh, is is it a profit or a loss for them uh, the IBAC is the answer for this Internet of Things, blockchain, artificial and cybersecurity. Now, whether it's profit or losses, it depends on your uh, perspective. Are you looking for a short term or for a long, long term? If you're looking for a long term, then the profit is there. I mean, definitely those technologies will benefit both the, the, the companies and the consumer. The short term, uh, you know, there will be some loss. There will be some people, who, some companies will close down. The companies will be out of business, uh, you know, acquire, you know, exit the market. But uh, but the the long term, this is the this is the four technologies I'm focusing on. I look at it as the future technologies in 2020 and beyond. We hear about banks investing in blockchain uh, technology. How do uh, how do they gain profit from this? They gain profit from the uh, from providing uh, you know so many of the services that they have in the bank on the blockchain network. The blockchain thing about it is the uh, is the trust factor where I look at the transaction. I know that nobody can change that. So this is this is this is a great thing for them. They don't have to do to do anything about you know about uh, you know uh, securing that one except using the blockchain technology. And also there is the big elephant in the room, which is the cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency is coming, you know, full speed at uh, the banks. You're talking about Libra, the cryptocurrency of uh, Facebook. Facebook with, with almost 2.5 billion and they have partners in that organization, Libra.org. The total number of the people that if this project of Facebook uh, sees the daylight, then they're going to have about 4 billion people are using that cryptocurrency, which is going to be a huge competition for the fiat currency you are talking about the dollar the pound you know the you know the uh, the yuan all of them there's going to be really a challenge for them so they don't want to be left behind without this one cryptocurrency is a lot of companies a lot of banks are really back and forth about it but the cryptocurrency is there the bitcoin is is a reality and and you can see that the pr the price up and down the fluctuation of those they have to think about something similar to libra which is something called stable coin one dollar for one you know for one crypto uh, currency and they use that one as a uh, peer-to-peer uh, sending and uh, receiving information you know uh, putting aside all the uh, you know uh, legal and and and, and uh, restrictions we have uh, how many times should an investor uh, think before investing in artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, Internet of Things, and I'm going to add number four, which is cybersecurity. Due diligence is the big thing for you. Please, you know, go through the due diligence. Look at the long term, the short term. Do your homework about it. You know, I mean, it, it doesn't matter whether you're investing in the four technologies or something else. I mean, if I want to buy a car, you know, I will do the research. I'll go to the dealership. I will kick the tires. I will test drive the car. How about if you are putting millions and, you know, hundreds of millions in, in this kind of technologies? Then you have to go and do the... Make sure you understand it first. This is number one. This is number one thing. There is no way for you to get into technology without understanding what is this. What's the impact of that one? So you can make that judgment by yourself. And the due diligence about the companies you are trying to invest in. You have been a guest in a variety of a huge uh, conferences and technology event. What do you usually demo in front of the audience to grab their attention? When I'm talking about crypto and I'm talking about uh, you know blockchain, including the cryptocurrency, I have a demo about how to create the cryptocurrency and how to tap into the blockchain network. At the same time, I show them a demo about the blockchain, and that's grabbed their attention. And I have done this kind of uh, you know conferences in multiple countries like Brazil, France, UK. Uh, Germany, uh, uh, Canada, and, and multiple uh, cities in the United States, uh, Egypt, and uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia, have done two uh, webinars with the university. So, so this is this is uh, this is how I show them the 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 how this technology works and how the technology really uh, prove itself. Uh, to answer the question, have you ever been asked by an event or conference uh, organizer not to do that? That's never happened. The only restriction I will have is on the time, because I can go and talk, you know, for hours about the IBAC or specifically about the the uh, blockchain. You have served as an instructor at well-known universities and colleges. Which course do you enjoy teaching the most? 
my first the first one is the blockchain technology and application I really enjoy teaching the class because it's a new technology and when I'm teaching it when I taught that one in the um, in the winter and then I taught that one in summer and now I'm teaching this one in the fall at Stanford University the information is actually different at certain parts I'm increasing the the volume of the information I'm adding new information back in the in the winter we don't have the Libra the Facebook Libra in the summer I introduce the Libra the cryptocurrency of Facebook to the curriculum of the of the class at Stanford to show them that this is something new and you know by the fall I'm gonna talk about the dabs the you know the the one of the application the uh, of the uh, of the blockchain I'm gonna add few things so it is an evolving and changing technology uh, along the way and this is very exciting when you teach a class like this one which is a brand new and the information is still you know you know hot you know and you can every day you hear about a new uh, a new development in that technology at the top of that I bring companies startups to the class where they present to the students uh, their products related to the blockchain you know I have I have a, a wonderful relationship with the ethereum organization and they will bring the startup and the student will make their decision about which one is really uh, a startup that that makes sense uh, the second class is the internet of things I teach internet of things at San Jose State which is really a great you know uh, course in a sense of it's covered all the topic we talk about it uh, today and and you have live you know examples about how Internet of Things changes our life. The third class that I'm looking forward to teach is the cybersecurity at Stanford University, and and I'm I'm working with the school, so we so uh, this class will be uh, ready as soon as possible. You are now a professor at the College of Engineering at San Jose State. What is your next step in academic career? I'm looking forward for more research. I'm looking forward for the next technology, the quantum computing. I'm looking forward for my uh, three books in 2020. That's I'm going to finish. I'm going to start writing those books once I'm done with my uh, current book, uh, the blockchain uh, technology and application. Uh, working with my student in their senior project is one of the you know the most enjoyable uh, uh, part of uh, of my uh, time at uh, San Jose State, where they uh, come up with new ideas, new systems, and I take it from you know an idea into the market, and and some of them actually uh, went into the market, and they have uh, you know nice startups to to mention that. The same thing with uh, Stanford. I'm. I look forward for the case of, uh, you know, bringing the VCs, the venture capitalists, and the uh, startup companies to the to the class, and then they present and they start talking about, uh, you know, their products and all this dialogue and, and and communications and sometimes you come up with a new idea out of this kind of discussion. It's it's really exciting to be in that environment. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, my contact information will be on the screen. If you have any questions, please contact me. I'll be more than happy to answer this. Uh, you can join me on LinkedIn. I have close to 38,000 connections there. Uh, I'll be more than happy to add you to, uh, to my connections. It will be my honor. Uh, my email is there, there if you have any questions. And uh, other than this, enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, hopefully, next time, I'll do it in person.